Welcome to another edition of Hustlers Kung Fu Live, where I'm going to bring you some serious stuff today. We're going to talk about how the stock market isn't the real economy and how to dig for data. We're about to get into it. It's going to be good. Hopefully you will learn some stuff from this. This live stream was brought to you by HustlersKungFuLifeSkills.com. Let me tell you what's going on. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to be doing a live webinar with the How to Make Money, the Making Money course, How to Make Money from Scratch, the Supplement Foundation. There is a new section there today, and there will be more. So we're going to do the live webinar and the price is going up after the live webinar. So if you want a piece of the action, you need to get in now. What do we do here at Hustlers Kung Fu Life Skills? We teach you how to make sustainable money. And H Undergrad now has 37 courses, including the new courses. So if you want a piece of that action, direct yourself to HustlersKungFuLifeSkills.com and grab a piece of the pie all right so let's get into this wonderful bean footage i got a lot i want to go over and i want to go ahead and give you guys a rationale of what's about to go down because there are many people who keep tooling that the stock market is the real economy and i'm about to prove it to you with facts that it's not the real economy i'm about to prove it to you and this and also let's let's get into how i got to this place and what got me in this mood look I understand that you like to aim for the king, you feminine men. I understand that you like to get into these debates. But when I ask you a grown man question and you come at me with little children tricks, I'm going to delete your comments and move on. Because the thing is, I'm open to a conversation of someone with some intellect. I'm open to a conversation with someone who's going to bring something to the table. When I ask you for real data, economic data, which I'm going to get into in this video, don't copy and paste reports from another website and think you're doing something. And also, look, I sell online courses. It's what I do. And if you bring that up, that just shows how jealous you are because you have the same opportunity to sell online courses, but you just don't have the talent. You don't have the hustle. You don't have the experience. So you're just a little hater. And I, I'm sick of you feminine men coming after me, starting a discussion, then it descends into this, like, I don't, all I see is links to your courses under the video. That's what I do. That's my job. That's my business. This is not romper room this isn't kindergarten this is the real world go ahead and get you some business so you can stay out of my business well that's enough on that so we're about to get into some some serious serious data now first of all we're, we're going to get to the point of uh We're going to get into a real company. Hold on. All right. So I'm going to show you guys this. We're going to be dealing with facts. There are 30 million small businesses in this country, which comp 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 comprise a whopping 
99% of all United States businesses. There are 30 million small businesses in the country. Okay. Now, on the stock exchange, the Dow Jones only has 30 companies. There's only 30 companies on the Dow Jones. There's 3,300 on the NASDAQ. Twenty eight hundred on the New York Stock Exchange, the Dow, the Nasdaq, the New York Stock Exchange represent the bigger. There's some smaller exchanges. So we can say all the exchanges together, we have about a representation of eight thousand businesses. This is what's on the this is what's the comprises the stock market. We're talking about eight thousand businesses. But we know there are 30 million businesses in the country. So the stock market doesn't represent 99.9% .9 of the businesses in the country. So how can the stock market be a snapshot of the American economy? This is something crazy. When the job reports came out that there were literally 10 million people who lost their jobs, the stock market went up. The stock market went up. It is not a reflection of the broader economy. Now, we're about to get into some good stuff. Let me go ahead and check the comments real quick. Let me see what y'all are saying. What's up, people? Ismo, if you got a question, you can ask me during this live chat. Kevin Lugman, he's a feminine man. See, the, the, what it starts off is humble admiration, then turns into jealousy because they all do the same thing. They start thinking that they're big and smart. And then th when I ask them grown man questions, they turn into a little child. Kevin, Kevin, it's 10 million plus. It's 10 million plus, and they're not representing real numbers. There's only 30 on the D, uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average. I understand that, but once again, the stock market is only talking about 8,000 companies out of 30 million. There is no way that the stock market could be a broad reflection of the American economy. And the fact that when the job numbers came up, the stock market went up, that tells you that it is out of line with reality. For those businesses that are listed upon the stock market, this may be good news, I don't know, but it is not a reflection of the broader economy. We're about to get deep in this. These are publicly traded companies. M my whole point is, I don't care if they're private or publicly traded. It, the stock market is not a reflection of the broader economy. Most companies are private. There is no index. They're not tracking the overall economic health of the American public. And I, we're going to get a little deep in this. All right, so let me go ahead and do my education bit. All right, 
So we're going to talk about digging for data. Like when I ask you for data, I don't ask for reports. I ask for data. And I'm going to teach you guys how I go ahead and come up with these predictions and assessments. This is something, This all this stuff I'm going to talk about is pre the current crisis. All of this stuff happened before the current crisis. Failing golf communities not on par with neighborhoods. The failure of golf communities continues to be a massive problem nationwide. According to this article in the Wall Street Journal with 1,200 golf communities, well, well, golf declining as a pastime. Many homeowners face declining property values and are saddled with heavy membership dues that they can no longer afford. When a golf course closes, the values of homes in an associated subdivision will typically drop 25%, but they may decline 40, per 40 to 50% if a legal battle ensues. This was happening before then. Now, I don't live in a neighborhood with a golf course, but there's one close by, and there's a lot of homes that have, that have been for sale in there like literally two years. Now, we're going to get into why people are not. Now, who bought golf course properties? It was the boomers. It was the baby boomers. And now the baby boomers are older and they're getting ready to downsize. We're going to talk about how come there's nobody to buy these property. And this is a huge, huge reason for my predicament. The number one reason millennials are struggling to save for retirement, and it's not debt. Most millennials, 60 percent, don't feel on track when it comes to saving retirement. When asked why they've fallen behind on their retirement savings, the number one response from millennials aged 23 to 38 was housing costs. Partly because of rising rental prices, young people are spending big chunks of their income on housing. This is especially true for families. One in five million parents uh, reported spending 50 to 59 percent of their income on housing, according to a 2016 report. Robert Reck, four reasons why millennials don't have any money. They're deeper in debt. Only half is likely on the whole and more likely to live in poverty than their parents. Millennials spend less money than previous generations because they literally have less money. Now, analyzing U.S. Census data, they found that 2016 there were an estimated 71 millennials based upon uh, Pew's definition of a generation from ages 1981 to 1996. Now, we only have a population base of 330 million. Minus 25%. That's like about 25. That's like 20% of our population. That is a huge, huge part of our population. That has no money. Now let's get into e-commerce sales. The statistic shows retail e-commerce sales as a percent of retail sales in the United States from 2013 to 17. It was 9% and expected to reach 12.4% in 2020. Now why is this important? Well, the reason that many people feel that malls are closing is because everyone's shopping online. That's not the truth. The reason that malls were closing was they were built for a different demographic that had money. Only 12% of all commerce is done online. Only 12%. Most of it's still done out here. Going back to millennials don't have money. Millennials don't have money for it to represent their population base. If they had money, the economy would be really booming, but they don't have money. They have less income than their parents. I want you to really think about that. 
when you're digging for data, you're rarely going to find a report that lays it out for you. This is why the government and all of the stock companies have analysts, the people who are going to compile the data and then decipher and analyze the data. And this is what you have to do if you're going to get into an argument with me. You need to be able to pull data and analyze it, not post a, a report. So this is all of this stuff happened before the bug. This is why we were moving toward a recession before the bug. Because the largest demographic of millennials don't have money. They're changing industries. They're not golfing. They're not buying dried dog food. This is something else too. Um, let me go ahead. Millennials are blamed for ruining pet food industry. Millennials are treating their pets like their firstborn child and it's reportedly causing a problem for some of the best known food brands. In the article, it stated that since millennials love their animals so much, they're keen to buy fancier pet food. This change is bankrupting many famous food brands such as Nestle, which is considered to be one of the most hated companies in the world for its major contrib contribution to pollution and child labor. This is how large this demographic is, that they can literally change and alter industries. And this is how I came up with my analysis that we we're going to have a depression because this stuff was happening before. This was happening before the bug. How Toys of Us went bankrupt. Subway was closing massive stores before the bug. This all happened before the bug. The economy was slowing down. I've talked to Uber drivers whenever I took Uber drivers, and every Uber driver said that it was slowing down. We were moving toward a recession before the bug. The bug just amplified and accelerated it. All right, I'm just refreshing the chat. Hold on. Kevin Davis, the real data of the economy isn't being tra tracked. That's the point I'm making. JB Well. Actually, they're not even representing the profitability of the companies in the stock market because every company has been impacted and their stock prices are not reflecting their current balance sheets. We're not going to know what their balance sheets are until they do their annual reports. So even with that, they're not reflecting the current state of the economy. This is why the stock market is very irrational. The stock market's a device. 
because the stock market can be manipulated. You can make money in good times. You can make money in bad times if you know how to do options, calls, shorting, long. If you know all of that stuff, the stock market ain't the real economy. It ain't even close to real economy. It is a separate economy, including only a handful of companies that in the American public. It's, it's like Disneyland. And once again, you, you, you see all these people who are talking about buy stock, buy stock. I guarantee you the stock prices are going to go lower. I guarantee it. You can bank on that because once the real economic factors filter onto that balance sheet, Warren Buffett just sold all his airline stock. And the, the numbers aren't even out how much money they've lost. He got out already. And people are bugging out. They're bugging out. All of these stock guys are like, what? Warren Buffett sells part of Delta Southwest Airlines stakes. Now, Southwest Airlines has the best balance sheet of any airline in the country. And Warren still dumped it. Warren Buffett halfway sold nearly $390 million worth of Delta and Southwest stock. And people are like bugging. They're like, they can't believe it. These companies are going to be eviscerated during this downturn. It does not take, I mean... Like a lot of these guys who, who do these YouTube channels who talk about stocks, they're really young and they're not business people. They're in the business of learning how to, you know, buy stocks and investigate stocks, but they're not real business people. And this is why they're shocked. I'm not shocked that Warren Buffett would get rid of his airline stock. Not shocked at all. Because with what's going on, airline stock is going to be depressed for about two years. It's not going to be a money maker, and if they get bailed out, guess who gets screwed? The shareholders. He got rid of it because he knows what's coming. When these companies take these bailouts from the government, the shareholders get stiff. Sometimes the shareholders lose all their money. He got out because he knows what's coming. And these guys are like shocked. It's like, Warren, he sold his airline stock? Why? Because people, I mean, literally, if you Google the Internet, you will see people on planes that are nearly empty. They're losing $60 million a day, these airlines. And they, their balance sheets aren't that healthy. They don't have a lot of cash on hand. They're going to need a government bailout, and they're going to get a government bailout. But it, it cracks me up. At these young guys who are like tripping. Kevin Davis, slightly little brother. Being as a part of the Dow, they're laying off people, losing contracts left and right, not selling new paying yet, only reflect a small loss of their income. Boeing actually went up. It went up. So this ain't a real reflection of what's really going on because there's a very good chance that Boeing could go bankrupt. Very good chance. Well, GE... And GE is a very interesting story because GA made more millionaires than any other company. And then when Jack Welch left, it just descended into hell. Clarence Baylock. You're right, JB. So if they can be kicked off the Dow for being so poor, then that to me proves the point the real economy isn't being really tracked because they don't want to. Pretty much.
<laughs> Kirk Johnson, I know dogs that eat better than I do. They're buying fancy dog food. They're not buying the traditional bank dog food that your parents bought. Doug, the raw diets are becoming more popular. Pretty much, Kevin. All right, Charles. High-end furniture, pretty much. Goddess Noel is not just millennials, but millennials as a collection, they, they do that. Kevin Davis, they ain't even paying gas money for a flight. If a plane takes off and only has 10 passengers on it, that plane is operating in the red. It ain't even covering fuel cost. Three pistols. If they're shocked about the airline stocks, they're really not paying attention. Jesse, the bottom is going to come. I feel the bottom is going for the Dow. It's going to be around 1400 to 1300 because what, what's going to happen? And let me go ahead and give you an analysis. This month, we're probably going to lose another 10 to 15, maybe possibly 20 million jobs. And what's going to happen is after these stimulus checks run out and people are going to be out here, uh, that's why I feel there's going to be a second stimulus. Uh, I think for once the government's going to bail out the American people a few times versus just corporations. And this is just going to, you know, make things really, really bad because what's going to happen is these people are not going to be able to pay their rents. And many of these landlords are overly leveraged. And the landlords are not going to be able to pay the banks. Then the banks are going to start having defaults. Then the banks are going to have problems giving some of their depositors their money. And that's going to cause a very nasty chain of events. Because I look at the banks I have my money in and I'm watching them like a hawk. And at the moment I feel that those banks are in danger, I'm moving my money out. Because depending on how heavily leveraged these banks are with these landlords... This is going to crash real estate prices. Now, with uh, 30 to 40 million people out of work, this is going to impact car sales. This is going to impact real estate. This is going to impact retail. This is going to impact everything. Edom, it ain't time to buy stocks. Trust me on that. It's going to go lower. You got a few months. The Max scandal. Boeing has been in trouble. Eh, possibly. Bruce Rain, the hundred hundred K cash. What would you do with it right now? I would sit on it. Right now, stuff is starting to go on sales. If you're patient, you can get stuff on clearance. I would sit on it. 100K, I would not be investing or nothing because the market's going to go down. Housing prices are going to get cheaper. You're going to be able to get way more for your money in a few months from now than you can now. I will sit on it. Doug, I spend 50 per month for 100 pounds of chicken for my dog versus 140 for 120 of premium dog food. Glenn, and most people don't know it, but about half the revenue of airlines is U.S. mail. Every place that's in skies in a ton of U.S. mail carriers. Speaking of the United States Postal Service, the Postal Service is on the verge of collapsing. 
Financial collapse in the United States Postal Service is coming. The Postal Service will run out of cash in five years. Postmaster General Megan Byrne shared this alarming news in a testimony before the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee earlier this month. This was written... When was this written? It doesn't say. The immediate consequences of such insolvency of the agency would be the largest postal system in the world, which moves 150 billion pieces of mail every year, would be dead in water. This is something that's never occurred during the long story history of the Postal Service. If you think primary effects would be devastating, the secondary effects would be catastrophic. More than 500,000 postal workers would be without wages. Magazine companies, which send millions of glossies each month, would have to find lo local deliveries. Retailers with sell through catalogs would see their main advertising medium vanish. The paper and printing companies they work with see their revenues plunge. Prescription drug deliveries would be disrupted at disruptive healthcare companies scramble to find alternative means. Jury summings, voting materials, ballots for our troops overseas and international ship shipments would stop flowing. The post office is on the verge of financial collapse, which, to your point, JB, would then damage, would, remove, would eliminate the revenue for all the mail on these planes. This is how bad things are. This is what we're dealing with. Kevin Lug and I work in the housing industry and I've got many calls on tenants who can't pay rent or have lobster jobs and conversely landlords who won't pay their mortgage. Pretty much. Uh, Jesse and many of these luxurious companies have a lot of cash in the bank. They're not going to drop their price and damage their brand. What do you mean even credit unions? Sure thing, Jesse. Uh, Jesse, I would just take all my cash out. But I don't think it's going to get to that. Sure thing, Bruce Wayne. Lance Brown, thanks for the $5 super chat. There are other banks because uh, the money I have my banks in are pretty conservative. But if the defaults mount up, I would have to spread my money over several accounts. So I would get the federal uh, insurance, FDIC insurance policy. God is no, yep. I am Roberts. If I had 5K, what would I do with it? I would stick it in the bank and sit on it. Paul Brown, I would not be buying stock right now. I am firmly convinced that stock is going to go lower. Unless you know how to manipulate the stock market, do calls, puts, and flip stuff, I would not be messing with the stock market right now because the traditional investing path is seriously disruptive and once again, you got all these folks who are like, buy stock, buy stock because it's cheap, it's on sale. You know, the market goes down one day. It's like, oh, it goes up. People are cheering. They're not looking at the marketplace fundamentals, which are the terrible. The marketplace fundamentals are terrible right now. JB Well, no, it's not. 
Eric wins because they're forcing post office to fund pensions to stop them later saying the pension fund is empty. Hey, there's a lot of issues in the American economy. Jason Clutchy, that's why the Dems added in the stimulus bill to bail out for the post office. They're going to need it. Paul Brown, some YouTubers are saying buy stock right now. All right, let me go ahead and break it to you. Any YouTuber who has a how to invest in stocks channel that has 30,000 to a few hundred thousand, if they have 30,000 subscribers, they could be making two to five thousand dollars a month. If they have 150 to 300,000 subscribers, they're making 10 to 30,000 dollars a month. They're living in an alternative universe than you. If you had thirty thousand dollars a month coming in, and you wanted to like put like five or six thousand in the stock market every month, that ain't no big deal. These guys are living in an alternative reality, and it's just not to the people they're talking to. Because the way that I've built Savage Finance is to give you foundational stuff, because they don't even talk about things you should do before you become investing. They don't even talk about that. It's just buy stock, buy stock. You got somebody out there who's got a piece of a job. They got a card note, which they're paying high interest on. They have student loans, which they're paying interest on. And they have credit cards they're paying interest on. And they're trying to throw some money in the stock market before cleaning all that up. They're hustling backwards because they're like, yeah, I got some stock, man. I'm, inve I'm an investor. I'm an investor with a $550 per month card note. With the interest of their payments of on their car, on their student loans, on their credit cards, whatever else debt they have, whatever gains they get in the stock market are obliterated by the high interest they're paying on all this debt. But you got people out there doing this stuff and it's just they're uneducated. They don't really know what they're doing because if they were to sit down and do the math, they'd be like, whoa, this ain't working. Kevin, this virus has demonstrated how weak fundamental America's fundamentals have become pretty much. Kevin, I know. Pretty much. Christopher, what website would you use for your demographic and news? I use a bunch of them. You can use the New York Times. You can use Wall Street Journal. You can use the census. See, the thing is, you're not going to find a website that's going to put it in a neat package unless it's a blog. You're going to have to take all of the data. You're going to have to analyze it and you're going to have to crunch it. And this is how you get your 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 real data, because once again, you, you go out here and you look at because I've been talking about this for two years. When this fool was like, you know, you know, he, he, he said these key words. I don't feel that you have any real data. I live and breathe data. I read stuff every day. I don't even tell y'all about all the stuff I read. And this is why I know that Americans economy is in trouble. And it's been in trouble for a while before the bug. And what's, you know, people are like, oh, it's going to be a bounce back. It's going to be a quick bounce back. It's, go it's not going to be a quick bounce back because we're still going down. We got to get to the bottom before we can bounce back. We still going down. This is, you know, I, I see a lot of irresponsible stuff here on YouTube. Good Lord, Doug. Israel, my, my advice to you is I, I don't care if you have 5000 I don't care. I mean, if $4,000 to invest, here, here's the whole thing with investing. If you got $4,000 and you want to invest that, you think that's going to make you some money? It ain't going to make you no money. I'm just going to be honest with you. What you should do is take that $4,000 and put it in the bank and wait this thing out. And if you want to become an investor, this is the time to be reading books and to get a Webull app and do paper trading before you start risking any real money. Because you could do the Webull app and then you could invest in these companies in, you know, from a purely safe standpoint and not lose any money if you make some bad picks. Jesse, thanks for the $20 super chat. Terry, I feel I have two full-time jobs and that feels like I have a part-time job. I 
All right, Elisa Archer, make that money. Uh, I don't think you should be investing in cryptocurrency. I think that's highly speculative, almost a scheme. Jeremiah Hampton, hey, wait, wait. Anybody who's wanting to buy a house, I would just wait because once these tenants can't start paying their houses, you're going to see all of these over leveraged people who are in the position where they can sell because they have some equity. This, they're going to flood the market. Just wait. I, if I was in the market for a house, I would wait six months to a year because it's going to be cheaper. I mean, one of the worst things you could do is buy right now, in my opinion, because unless you have to, you just move, you got a new job, you got to buy a house. Okay, I understand. But if you have the ability to wait, just wait. Do not buy now because the mark, it's going to be cheaper. It's going to be cheaper, much more. It's going to be much, much, much cheaper in the future. If you got cash, you need to sit on it. Terry Brafer, what's a good course to start with? The money management course. Because the way that I'm constructing Hustlers Kung Fu Life Skills is to give you foundational knowledge. And the first thing you need to do is manage the money that you're currently making to the best of your ability before you start making more money. Well, I don't see the media is scaring people because I consume a lot of media. I just see them putting out bad numbers. And this is an issue that many people don't want to confront. They don't want to deal with the reality that it's bad. It's, it's, it's bad. It ain't going to be good. It's bad. And many people are like, oh, let's be positive. Let's just talk about positivity. It ain't even as bad as it's going to get yet. Eat them. We will see. Gee, the burr people in the bigger. <laughs> I had people try to get me to do the burr strategy, and I, I didn't like it because I didn't like the fundamentals. Charles, and you funny. King John, credit unions should not have made these risky loans, so credit unions should be good. Zanon, how would the black communities be affected? Uh, since most of the black community is poor, most of the black community has these low-income jobs. They're going to be greatly affected. These are the first job. These are the jobs that are going to disappear. These are the jobs that people are getting laid off from. It's going to be greatly affected. This is why I have this channel to illustrate why you need to level up and you need to get a better job and you need to start a business so your economy, your economic situation can be way better. Pretty much a light. There, there's more. It's, it's going to get deeper. The market's going to go lower. Stocks are even close to the bottom. These companies are rock scaven. That's what I'm saying. Once the real economic fundamentals hit these balance sheets, investors going to have to like, whoa, this isn't a good stock to buy because they lost half their income or they lost 80 percent of their income. Like Disney. Disney is a blue chip stock that gets 60 percent of its income from its theme parks, which are currently closed. How would your life be if you lost 60 percent of your income? And then Disney gets a lot of his movie money from release of movies. They're not filming movies. All this stuff is pushed back. So anticipated and expected income ain't coming. Disney could lose 80% of its income during this. There is no way that that stock can maintain its current value, losing 80% of its income. No way. And I feel that a lot of these dividend companies that are in harm's way, such as Disney, are going to suspend their dividends. They're going to have to. Kevin, a lot of companies are diversifying. Don't invest at all. That's pretty much what I'm saying. Wait a few months.
Pretty much, Kevin. Mayweather Financial Group credit spreads facts say the market will drop another 3,000 points because uh, another 30,000, another 30 percent at least. And that's already baked in. Once the real market fund play, marketplace fundamentals start kicking in and people start looking at these balance sheets, once they start reporting, they're gonna, their hair is going to be on fire. What are your feelings on Forex? If you're getting Forex, prepared to be a loser for the first two or three years you trade Forex. I mean, you can make a lot of money with Forex, but you got to get your skill level up. And there are many people who are like, I'm going to go into Forex. I'm going to try to do day trading. And they don't have no skill sets, and they're going to lose money. Know the Forex. Blind King last recession, Las Vegas was hit hardest, and Detroit still hasn't recovered. What cities do you think would be most? I really don't know. I haven't really thought about that. I see profits. This is going to affect us for five plus years before the economy is a good standing. And that's why I say we're going to have a depression. A recession only lasts months. A depression lasts years. That's the only difference between the two. Paul Brown, thanks for the $5 super chat. Glenn, been subscribed two years. Respect. Appreciate your content and your knowledge and content. Thank you. Oh, they're going to be pushing Disney Plus because that's an income stream for them. They need it. Denamus, I sent out an email from my from the Glenn that check your spam folder. I sent that email out this morning because I remember your name because you were on the one of the, you're on that. You should have got an email. Check your spam folder and it's going to give you the code. Riddick got beat. Hey. The whole thing can be compared to the intro where we are now of a four hour movie. This is how long this thing's going to last. It ain't going to be a quick recovery. You like when it comes to J training, you have to learn how to lose. Hey. So this is, you know, I, I just put this whole thing out because, like, if you want to duel with me in the comments, if you come with a good argument, I'm game for it. But don't come at me with some BS and some reports. I want real economic analysis looking at the marketplace. I've got economic analysis from the last two years that the economy was moving toward a recession. And this bug thing just accelerated what was already going to happen and made it, in my opinion, much worse than what it was going to be. And once these things start happening, because this month, what you need to be looking for is the infection rate. And if we don't peak this month, more than likely we will peak next month. And if we don't peak next month, we will peak in, in June, which is going to be 90 days. And you're going to see other madness. This is why I went ahead and got the shotgun. Because right now. We're in the first stage of this thing. And, you know, and also with the stimulus checks, there's all kinds of issues with the stimulus checks. There's a lot of people who are not going to get the stimulus checks who should be getting them because they, they haven't filed a tax return. There is a lot of people like with these uh, uh, small business loans and these grants. There's hiccups with that. Like I said, you know, people sitting here like going on and on about this stuff and once again god loves the person who has his own and that's all i'm gonna say on that all right rod yeah i sent that out because what i feel is going to happen is this thing is going to peak 
probably in May or June. I don't think it's going to peak in April because looking at how Americans have responded to this, it's like, I'm living my best life. I'm going to the golf course. I'm going to this wedding. I'm going to these parties. <clears throat> and we're, going, <clears throat> we're probably going to have the highest infection rate in the world because this is the home of the brave, land of the free. We do what we want. And I'm looking at what happened in New Orleans because they, <clears throat> they had Mardi Gras. And this was before the lockdown measures. And they have a massive infection rate in New Orleans. Um, there's uh, uh, an escalating infection rate here in Georgia. Um, I just see that people going to do what they going to do. And I hate to say this, but some people are going to have to experience pain and hardship for them to get it. I see profits. I did 9,000 sales last week to zero until we reopen. Self-employment pandemic assistance hasn't rolled in out yet. Oh, it's going to be a minute. Terrell, my father's an NYC paramedic. paramedic. He said last night was the worst shift he's ever had in his career. Had to do a mandatory 16 hours overtime. Once these stories start filtering out and people start seeing this stuff, that's when they're going to kind of get it. Salika gathers more like the land of the stupid. My coworker just called me and told me she tested positive and they have having barbecue cookouts and everything. Hollywood prep. Yep. You know, it's, it's going to be location based, but I've, I think they've already activated the National Guard in some areas. Riddick got beats. They shut down Daytona Beach. Just opened it back. They're they're not taking it serious. And also, I want you to think about these industries that are about to be impacted. We're not going to have proms this year. These kids are not going to go to proms, and more than likely, we're not going to have graduation ceremonies where these kids get to walk across the aisle, the stage, and get their diploma. That's a lot of money lost for graduation parties, for limo rentals, for formals. More money sucked out the economy. I mean, it, it is going to be deep. It's going to be deep. And, you know, looking into the economic tea leaves, I see nothing but disaster. Because one of the reasons that the money management course is so important is the last 12 years, things have been so good that people just haven't felt that they had to put money to the side. Just hadn't felt that they had to put money to the side. It's like, I can do whatever I want. And there's going to be someone to save me. There's going to be a government bailout. There's going to be a stimulus until we get to the point where that ain't going to work. Hobosexuality is going to be going through the roof. Kirk Johnson, that, that is a tough pass. But you're going to have many people doing that. But, you know, I, the stock market, and the, this this is kind of hard because I have a channel that's in that space, and I got to talk about it. And I'm going to do a video talking about getting the Webull app and doing paper trading before risking any money. Because I, I figure you should get into the market. You should get knowledge. You should study companies. Before you commit any money, you should level up your knowledge. You should know what you're doing. And paper trading is one of the best ways to do this without risking any of your money. Because once again, many of these financial YouTubers, uh, I think their CPM is higher than mine. And that's how much money you get per 1,000 views. I had the video that got 4,000 views. I made 100 bucks. And I have a friend who has another channel who literally has to get 200,000 views to make $100. Because my CPM is so high and the CPM on these financial channels is extremely high. So you got someone who's making twenty dollars to $100,000 a month. They're living in an alternative reality. And many people just don't understand that. March Madness, 
trillions of dollars were lost because no March Madness. Kevin Lung, you said you said the key thing, the domino effect. Yeah. And this is something that people are not analyzing it because I, I watched this video where this guy was just shocked that Warren Buffett sold airline stock. I'm like, airlines are not making any money. They're going to have to receive a government bailout, which means doom and gloom for shareholders. And I'm just sitting there and they're just like shocked. I'm like, the world is falling down. I think some people will be kicked into the streets. I think some people will have to endure those hardships. I think some people will have to go through those very painful lessons because like all of this mania about the stock market, the stock market, Trump talking about the stock market. I just illustrated to you that the stock market doesn't represent 99% of the companies in America. If they did, it would not be doing what it's doing. It would be down, down, down because my business ain't on the stock market. This little cafe around the corner ain't on the stock market. This entire place ain't on the stock market. These are businesses that employ people and they're, you know, like all these auto places are open. They're fixing cars and the gas stations are open. The pharmacies open, the grocery stores open, Costco's open. DD the metaphysical goddess. Goddess, when I saw the companies asking for their lines of credit, I knew all hell was breaking loose. Terrell Braithway, they put this together at the last moment. And I got to give them a credit. They got that put together pretty quickly. But here's the thing. Like, on Savage Finance, I got some videos talking about how to handle credit. Because right now, many of these credit card companies are shutting people's credit cards down or cutting their limits. Right now. Because they've been through this before. They know what people are going to do. Bling Kong, I'm shocked Ron Buffett took so long to sell. Granted, he did his own, he did own the millions of shares. Bling Kong, he actually said in March he wasn't going to sell it. And then once he realized and looked at the landscape and looked at like what was really going on, he was like, I'm out of here. Organized crime is booming. Crime always booms in bad times. Always. Always. Crime's going to be off the chart. This is why I got a shotgun. This is why I got a concealed carry permit. Jesse Baldo. Yeah, I mean, there, there are some people who are going to be winners in this. Right now, Costco's a winner. The pharmacies are winners. Target's a winner. Um, HEB's a winner. But I want you guys to start investing into your own thing and building your own companies because as people ask, like, what would I do with 100K? I got more than 100K. I'm sitting on my money because I know what's going to happen. Stuff is going to go on clearance. If you a person with six figures in the bank, hold on to it. Wait a minute. Because your money's going to be like, trust me, six figures in the bank, that's going to be like a million dollars in about six to nine months. It's going to be like a million dollars. Just hold on to it. Don't be in no hurry to spend your money. Just hold on to it. Let, let, let the game come to you. Don't go to the game. Don't feel that you're going to miss out. You're not. You're not going to miss out. On another note, please check out the invention on Event 201. This is exactly what's happening now. Is that a Netflix movie? I have to check that out. Hollywood Prep, I was thinking about that. We may not have an NFL season or a college football season. It may not happen this year. Just depends. Paul Brown, I'm thinking about ordering some masks. Chevy, I don't think the dope boy is going to be broke.
is one of the things I want you guys to do, because like, like I said, and this is a bit of tough truth. If you're not prepared for this thing, it's already here. You know, there's not a lot that you can do to prepare because it's here. And hopefully you listen to me for the last two years because I've been really talking about it. I've been going hard and people just like, we're well, just trying to sell his courses. He's just trying to fear monger people. What do you say now, people? What do you say now? We're in the midst of a recession. Like I said, it happened pretty much when I predicted it would. Actually, it happened a little earlier. And, you know, for all you feminine men who want to challenge me, look, here, here's what you do. You go ahead and you start your YouTube channel. You build you an audience and you start talking some stuff. Since you're so convinced of your opinions, go ahead. It's wide open because uh, one of the things I'm going to do, because I, I, the one just filtered by because he wanted to go back and forth. And when he made that attack, it's like, well, you know, all the links you have below are just to your courses. I'm like, it's been like that for many years. What's your problem? Why why you even bring that up? Oh, that's right, because you're jealous. Uh, you're going to be able to get cars so cheap. Pretty much, Romel. Jay Green, I got 250 in cash, 50K in gold, and 100K in BTC. No debt, but have service-based business and has revenue taking a hit, but I don't think I will completely stop. Jay Green, you're in better position than 99% of Americans. Paul Brown, drugs, sex, food, always sell pretty much. DD, the metaphysical goddess, thank you. Captain Brewer, it could happen. Wayman Brown, the strippers are going to OnlyFans and they're becoming cam girls. Kirk Johnson, that's interesting. Right for real estate, I think G and others have been telling us for two years to get your money up. Now you have to go out and find multiple ways to earn money and stack ASAP just to have a shot at leveling up. Pretty much, like like I said, you know, at this you you can't prepare. It's already here, and my big fear is that many people are going to be impacted and hurt by this. So this is one of the ways, you know, the stuff in this is how you go out and get data because you're not going to, you know, there, there's some pretty good blogs out there that will do some breakdowns, but you got to go to several websites, crunch the numbers and come up with your own analysis. And I showed you everything I showed you in this stream happened before the bug. This happened before the bug. And we have a huge percentage of our population, millennials who are burdened by student loan debt, who don't have any money, who are not spending money the way that their parents, the baby boomers did and this is having a problem on the economy. This is having a serious impact on the economy. Uh, well, hopefully we will have college football because Trump talked to a lot of these sports teams and hopefully they'll have people back in the fans in the seats in August and September. But if we have, you know, once, if this thing, if it, cause it's got a peak, it's got to filter through the country. And, you know, if we can get to the point where this thing starts declining, because it's still going up. Hollywood prep. I absolutely do think you'll be able to get great deals on that stuff. Terrell Braithway, 
I'm glad I took your advice. I stacked 30K in the last two years and was about to invest 10K on the market, but just commit me. Good man. Like, like this is what you do. Like, what I'm going to do for tomorrow's stream, I got to do some research, is how to get a Webull app and do paper trading because the market is going to continue to go down. It ain't going to go down forever, but it's going to continue to go down. And I don't think if you wait two, three, four, five months, you're going to miss anything. I don't think you're going to miss any gains because you need to let it do what it's going to do. And everyone who's saying, you know, you should buy stocks, look at this person. If this person's situation is radically different from yours, i.e. if they're a financial YouTuber, some of these guys are making a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars a month. They're living a totally different life. So you can't really take their advice. Uh, active duty military, they good. Darfur, I'm a registered nurse. We can now see if people have been exposed to the virus by checking their antibodies. Kevin Lugman, life goes on. So right now, you know, you, you just, I'm, I'm serious. Like, you know, don't be, because I mean, many people like get into the stock market, get into the stock market, you're going to miss out. You literally would be buying on the way down. Like I said, a few months or if this thing, because I will be, you know, I'm going to get into it and I'm going to be able to give you guys some information because I, there's not going to be a quick turnaround. Just let that fantasy go. That That's not going to happen. Because when you look into the real economic data of how these countries are, and if you look at an economic snapshot before the bug, van life, this girl, Janelle, she blew up. She living in the van. Look at why is van life so popular? Because people don't have no money. This was before the bug. This, this thing is just going to knock certain people out. It's going to knock them off the, off the ladder. Kevin, I mean, a lot of the people are losing their jobs. What do you think of Robinhood Edcorn? I really don't have a lot of experience with it because one of the things I'm going to do for my personal finance channel is download each app and just kind of go through it. Because um, I'm going to start with Webull, and that's going to be tomorrow. Because uh, hopefully I'll get that done today. Because like I said, I've got a list of things I'm working on. Pretty much, Jay Reed, you're going to be able to get a lot of stuff cheap because there's a lot of people who have economically fragile situations and they have no money in the bank. No money. You got people out here with a nice new truck. The wife got a new car. They got a boat. They got payments on the house, both cars and the boats. And then one of them lose their job. They're going to be in trouble. Acorn sucks. Uh, Wayman Brown, many doctors take an oath, uh, the Hippocratic oath. They're going to do their jobs. And th there's some nurses who've already opted out because they don't want to be exposed. New York's paying nurses like 100 bucks per hour. And that's how hard it is to get nurses up there right now. Uh, Rod for real estate TD America trades a good platform to start paper trading paper trading is learning the stock market with play money pretty much Kevin Davis I agree Robin Hood's been having a lot of issues lately. Yes, they crashed. A lot of people got stuck. Ken Durbar, pretty much. 
Darth Dividend is better to have an M1 Finance portfolio according to Acorns. Darth, those nurses are cowards. I'm a nurse. We sign up to help people. Like I said, I feel the majority of nurses and doctors are going to do their job, but there's going to be a select group of nurses who are going to opt out. They're like, hey, I don't care about that money. I care about my health. Yep, New York is, is pushing hard. We still have two more months of lockdown. Hey, it, it, it is what it is. All right. So once again, let's go through H undergrad. I've improved it. I've added more stuff. I've added the new courses to it. You got 37 courses now. And I've added the art of holding companies to this. All of that stuff's there. So I got some older lectures. I mean, essentially, this is going to help you work on your because with the new courses, that's going to help you learn how to make money from scratch. And it's going to teach you a lot. And what I'm going to do is separate these two platforms. B school for hustlers. I'm going to focus all the digital stuff. And then with hustlers, Kung Fu, I'm going to work on the foundational education because right now if you go ahead and get the how to make money package you'll get everything you'll get everything in hustlers kung fu as well as everything in b school for hustlers and that's 3500 your financial education how to make money so essentially what i did i sent out a link to everyone who bought that package where you can now have access to the stuff at hustlers kung fu because I'm going to go hard with creating training and stuff because I, re I remember that period of time where I was living in that boarding house and I didn't have any money. And what got me out of that period was massive self-education. It was massive. Earl Nightingale, Lead the Field, The Power of Your Subconscious Mind, Tony Robbins, Unlimited Power. And it was self-education and just applying those lessons, which literally turned my life around and put me on this trajectory of continued financial success. And also for the folks who want to get into this course, I'm going to be raising the price really soon. How to make money from scratch. We're having a webinar at 6 p.m. tomorrow. So we're developing ideas, testing ideas, because this is, you know, my whole framework on how to make money organically, because with these platforms like, you know, Amazon FBA, a lot of people will find themselves left out in the cold, you know, Shopify, you've got to depend on either Instagram influencers, or you got to depend on Facebook ads. And when you build a business from scratch and you can you could do so much more and it, it's going to be a challenge. I'm not going to lie to you. It's going to be a challenge, but the beauty of this thing is no one can just turn your business off with a flip of the switch. I was on Facebook and I had a, a group on Facebook that had like 2,500 members and my group just one day disappeared. I didn't get a word. I didn't get a, a letter or email from Facebook. It just disappeared. And then 18 months later, it just came back. It was kind of like a ghost ship. It disappeared then came back. I was like, what? what? What is going on? It was just weird. So this course is going to be going up. I'm going to be adding more sections to it. So just to let y'all know what the deal is. And you can get it at HustlersKungFuLifeSkills.com or you can go to BSchoolForHustlers.com. You can pick whatever you want to do. All right. So let me check these comments. See what y'all have to say. All right, let's see what y'all got going on here. All 
I see 401ks being eviscerated, DJ. Jay Reed, that's already happening. Kevin Davis, I was in Iraq and Afghanistan during the wartime, scared out of my mind, thinking I wasn't coming back. These folks know what up. They're human. Newsman, 75% of people live paycheck to paycheck. 2.4% non-unemployment for Great uh, for Great Depression, and we're headed for 35 to 43%. Pretty much. DJ, I don't think that moment has come yet. Uh, Dark dividends. I think that it's going to go lower. Pretty much, Terrell. The reset is going to be mind blowing. J. Reed, you can make six figures building a print-on-demand company for less than one thousand. I start. Yeah, it's gonna take some skills to do that. But that's all I have for you guys. I will see you guys later.